Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to share my journey with you, which helped me to improve my teaching. How many of you want to improve your teaching? All of you, maybe your parents, maybe you want to teach someone else. I improved my teaching over a period of last seven years as a full-time educator, as a researcher for over 10 years and a product designer for a company for over two years now. I have learned that there is a strong correlation between programming and teaching. You may be wondering what is the correlation between programming and teaching, but trust me, this is something which I learned and this has improved my life of teaching to a level which is, had made it astronomically simple. Now understand what is programming first of all. For us to understand what is programming, there are very basic steps for us to understand what is programming. First of all, you need to process your thoughts. Secondly, you need to do the coding. And thirdly, you need to do the testing as well, which we may call it as algorithm, we may call it as programming or coding. And the third part, we may call it as testing as well. To give an example for you, if I have a robot and I to tell the robot that, hey robot, please bring me a glass of water. Now, I can't tell that robot to bring me a glass of water directly. I need to break down the steps, give it in all the form, such a way that robot can bring me the glass of water as well. Understanding from that matter, say that I have to tell the robot, go to the kitchen, go to the left side shelf, bring me a glass of water, pick up the glass tumbler, then fill up with the water from the water purifier. If the water is not there in the purifier, take the water from the refrigerator, make sure the water is around 30 degrees Celsius and bring it to me. Now these are the series of steps I need to tell it in an algorithmic format as well. Understand from that matter that it is the algorithm that I need to program it in a manner that yes, the robot can understand. And finally, I need to test it as well. That is the water drinkable? Is the water around 250 ml? Is the water fit for drinking? Has it bought the water in 10 minutes or time or so? This is basically programming stuff. But how can I relate it to teaching? Understand that matter if I am teaching anything. Let's say I am teaching machine learning or I am teaching Java. Now in teaching anything like that, if I have to tell my students who are enrolled in the course, yes, these are the set of topics you are going to understand. And let's say these are 30 courses, 30 videos, 30 lectures. And in these 30 lectures, these are the set of topics that you are going to understand or you are going to study. After a point of matter, these are the set of assessments that you are going to go through. These are set of evaluations and assignments that you need to make. If that credit is given to my students, they will be able to jump on the process of learning wholeheartedly, isn't it? I want to say for that matter, wholeheartedly means that as a student, I need to go out of my comfort zone because any skill that need to be acquired, it has to be done over a period of time. Sometimes my students have to make sure that they come out of their own identity and do certain things. Sometimes fail and then do it again. Maybe fail once again and do it again. And maybe still they need to try it third time. And that has to be done over a period of at least three to six months point of time. So to do that, it is very important for us to make sure that there is certain level of encouragement and there is certain level of discouragement to go away from the path that stops them from learning. Okay, what is encouragement? What type of encouragement one can think for it? Let's say one of the encouragement is appreciation. What is appreciation? One of the appreciation I can say that I will give them extra marks. For if they are doing whatever they are doing, if they do something extra, I will give you extra marks. I will give you a lot of positive affirmation saying that yes, thank you so much for asking good questions. Maybe thank them for the time as well in the class as well. Write positive emails for them for asking challenging questions. Even giving them chocolates and pens for being most participative in the class as well. These are set of affirmations or these are set of encouragements that I can give them. What about negative? I may give them some fears. Okay, if you are not submitting your assignment on time, maybe you will lose marks. If you are not performing the assessments properly, all of them, you may lose grades as well. If you are following some malpractices as well, it may be a point of time where you may be put onto the disciplinary committee as well. So these are the fears that may stop them from following malpractices and make them on the course of doing properly. In all these things, you understand that matter I have tried all of them. Something worked, something did not work. But for me to understand what worked, what did not work, it is important that what are the final goals? Hold on. Is goals important for us? I mean, what are the goals for a course? For a large amount of seven years, I thought that if I'm having a good feedback, that's the success of a course. If my students are not following any malpractices, if my students are participating properly, it's a success, isn't it? They're scoring high, they're a good feedback, they're performing on time, it's a success, isn't it? But then all these things are subject to personal interpretations, isn't it? 
Somebody may say that a feedback of 9 out of 10 is good. Somebody may say that no, it is not. It's all personal interpretation. The same lecture, same course, it's same thing as well. But how can I improve myself? How can I ensure that it is as certain as programming? Now, in programming, I don't program my robot and then test it across what worked or did not work. I first of all had to make sure that I want a glass of water. Glass of water at the temperature of 30 degrees, off to 50 ml, isn't it? Then I do the set series of steps and then I do programming. Similarly for me, it was a game changer for me when I understand that I had to define my objectives beforehand of the course. And it was even a beautiful science when I understood that the assessment need to be performed beforehand. It has to be written beforehand. Then after a point of time, the science was that if I am teaching a particular course, let's say Java, at that point of time, I need to make sure that that course on Java had a predefined objectives, not only for the particular course, but at the same time for every module as well. For example, if I am teaching a course of Java or a particular module which may be as small as a lecture, I need to tell them, you need to apply at the time of testing, I need to tell them, this is something you need to apply on these particular set of topics and I will be evaluating you, that's how. When the students are writing their evaluation, it's not the student's evaluation, but my evaluation as well. How nicely I perform when I'm teaching them. At the same time, before the start of the course, like in hypothesis, when we're doing the research, we need to set the hypothesis before and, and the clearance hypothesis as well. Yes, 70% of the student need to perform such and such so that they score over 70% of the marks in these assessments. It has to be defined beforehand, before even I step foot in the class for the first time. And that is what changed me perspectively completely. Just like a robot has to be tested further, that this is something which I want, these are the test cases I want, then only I will write all the algorithms and then I start programming. It's not the way that I start bombarding the lectures and if the course is complete, the topics are taught properly, that's okay. No, I need to set the objectives beforehand, perhaps for every module or to the level of every class as well. Then I need to set the assessments beforehand, that yes, this is the level which I am testing them. And the clearance of the assessments tell that whether I succeeded or not. If I not, maybe I will give them the video recordings. Maybe I will give them the written material as well to record or to see as well. Maybe I will give them multiple choice questions as well. Sometimes I will do the programming with them. Sometimes I will ask them to do the programming and maybe teach others as well. Whatever it takes, that is my creativity to ensure that the students are following that particular level of assessments for that particular course as well. Now this has ridiculously simplified my level, but you may be wondering, as an educator. Now, for me to prepare every lecture, it takes three to six hours. And if I have to go to that much detail, God knows if I will be able to teach any course or not. That is where we have our programming and our AI tools as well. We can use AI tools like chat, GPT, mid journey. For example, this particular session which I prepared, the slides as well, they are prepared mostly by generative AI. Now, at that point of time, these tools and techniques can help us define the objectives, can help us define the assessments as well, can help us define the parameters, can help us track the students and deliver the content that is to be there and also make sure that I get to know what are the issues with them in the real time as well and help them solve in my creativity. That's how I will use these tools to make sure I am doing a better job as a teacher. But it's just like programming. At the end of the day, I need to ensure that the course is taught properly in a manner it is certain for me to test across. In a manner that is certain for me, what I am giving is why I am giving at all is also there. Understand that I can tell the students why this assessment is there, why this particular module is given, why this particular example is given to them as well. Won't it make certain difference as well? Why you're writing exam, why you're doing programming, why I'm doing what I'm doing. If it is told to you, what level of participation, enthusiasm and zeal would be there for you to jump on to learn that particular course. That has been something for me, like what I understood. So teaching as in case of programming is something like reducing the entire thing into series of steps then make sure the series of steps are communicated in an effective manner and tracking the success for it as well, what I am doing as well. So let us bring on to the journey of learning, where in the journey of learning we are fueled by empathy, powered by technology and using our creativity, we are using that to teach others as well. This is a time for us as an educator, as a learner, to start off the new process of learning, which is newer one, which ensures the success, which ensures equal participation at the same time, a level of certainty as well. Thank you so much.